Hello, this is Dr. Jack Jacobs, and I am the President and Chief Science Officer of Zicha Genesis Medicine. In this short presentation, I want to discuss our belief that FGF1, our drug candidate, can potentially slow or even reverse the course of multiple sclerosis. Now on this next slide is our hypothesis. We believe that localized vascular disorder and decreased blood perfusion initiates multiple sclerosis, as well as other neurodegenerative diseases. Now on the bottom of this slide, you can see the microvasculature, or capillaries as they are called, in the healthy brain on the left and in the damaged brain on the right. This dysfunctional vasculature is not good for neurons. They suffer from a lack of nutrients and oxygen, and metabolic waste that all of our body cells produce are not effectively removed. These dysfunctional capillaries can also leak immune cells and toxic proteins that can attack the surrounding neurons. And this is a very important point when we discuss the disrupted microvasculature in patients with multiple sclerosis. Okay, so what is FGF1? As shown in this slide, FGF1 is a protein. It is a natural growth factor in our bodies that can stimulate the growth of new blood vessels, a process known as angiogenesis. And FGF1 can also stimulate the growth of new neurons, a process called neurogenesis. Now we, use, now we all use this FGF1 molecule many times a day to repair things such as cuts and scrapes on the outside of our bodies. And internally, FGF1 is very important for the repair and regeneration of such tissues as muscle and bone. Now let's talk about why we believe FGF1 may be an attractive candidate to treat multiple sclerosis. This next slide shows the pathology of MS namely the lesions that occur in the nerve fibers in this disease. On the left side of the figure is shown a lesion which has developed at the base of the spinal cord and the symptoms of numbness, tingling, and pain develop distal to the lesion in the legs. The right side of the figure shows the damage that occurs in the central nervous system with MS. Immune cells and other toxic substances attack the myelin sheath which is a structure that surrounds and protects the nerve fibers. This leads to damage of the exposed nerve fibers and the symptoms of MS. Now on the next slide, we can see that these lesions occur not only in the spinal cord of MS patients, but also in the brain. This is a brain scan using MRI, and the lesions which show up as yellow areas on the scan are clearly visible in the brain. So how do these lesions and how does this nerve damage occur? Our hypothesis, which is shared by other investigators as well, is that in multiple sclerosis, dysfunctional blood vessels leak immune cells and other toxic components, which damages the surrounding neurons. So on the left-hand side of the figure, we see a healthy blood vessel able to deliver nutrients and oxygen to nerves. Then through a process that is not completely understood, certain insults, such as defective genes, smoking, or pathogens damage the blood vessels as shown on the right side of the figure. This leads to reduced blood flow and the leakage of immune cells and toxic proteins such as fibrinogen from the blood vessel. The immune cells directly attack the neurons and the fibrinogen coats the neurons, making them appear foreign and susceptible to further attack. So we believe an agent such as FGF1, which can heal these blood vessels or generate replacement blood vessels could potentially reverse this process and get at what we believe is the root cause of multiple sclerosis. Now let's look at some patient data which supports our hypothesis. Our model would predict that this toxic molecule, fibrinogen, would be highly elevated in the brains of MS patients. This next slide shows a clinical research study that looked at fibrinogen deposits in the cortex region of the brain in patients with multiple sclerosis. Now fibrinogen is a protein that normally stays inside the blood vessel where its normal function in our bodies is to participate in the blood clotting process during injury. However, in multiple sclerosis, there is a huge leakage of fibrinogen out of the blood vessel and into the surrounding brain tissue as shown here. The white bars represent normal individuals and the black bars show up to a 20 fold increase in fibrinogen leakage in the cortex of multiple sclerosis patients. This is certainly a place fibrinogen should not be. And as we talked about previously, this fibrinogen can coat the nerves, 
leading to an attack by immune and microglial cells that patrol the central nervous system. As additional support to our hypothesis, it has been demonstrated that brain blood perfusion is diminished in multiple sclerosis. This next slide shows MRI imaging of the brain of a healthy individual and that of an MS patient. On the right-hand side of the diagram is the blood perfusion index, with red being maximal blood flow and blue being minimal blood flow. It can clearly be seen that MS patients on a global basis, that is in the entire cortex region of the brain, have reduced blood perfusion. And we believe this condition also can contribute to the nerve damage seen in multiple sclerosis. So just to summarize at this point, we believe multiple sclerosis is a disease caused by vascular disorder and leaky blood vessels that results in nerve fibers being attacked and destroyed, causing the distinctive lesions of MS. We believe a drug such as our FGF1, which can repair the vasculature, has the potential to stop and reverse the symptoms of MS. Okay, so now let's talk about a planned clinical trial with FGF1 in patients with multiple sclerosis. At this time, I will call upon Victoria Montano, our Vice President of Strategic Innovation, who is helping us to get these trials going. She will give you some of the details of the trial at this point. Victoria? Thank you, Jack, for your introduction. Zhitya is now preparing an investigational new drug IND application to submit to the US FDA to conduct a phase one clinical trial in patients with multiple sclerosis. Plan start date is first quarter of 2019. In the next slide, Proposed phase one clinical trial in MS. Trial design, a pilot study, no placebo group. Primary goal is to study safety. Secondary goal is to study efficacy. Duration of the treatment. One month treatment, two hours infusion of FGF1, three times per week. One month follow up. If no safety issues continue with two additional months of FGF1 treatment, three times a week with an additional one month of follow-up. Study sites. The total site number is up to four sites. If you want to participate in clinical trials or want more information, please go to our website, shown here in blue. If you want to speak to someone, please phone 702-802-9855. Thank you.